A civil war has been raging in Burma for more than 60 years. The struggle of armed ethnic groups for greater autonomy carries on as the country prepares for its first general election since the end of the military rule. While the rest of the nation is busy speculating who will be the next president, the situation in some war zones is somewhat similar to what you can see on the screen. In seven states along Burma's borders, with Thailand, China and India, bullets have overshadowed the forthcoming ballot. The Burmese military is carrying out attacks using guns and airstrikes on rebels as well as civilians in the states of Kachin, Shan and Karen. These border states are home to ethnic nationalities whose cultural practices are different from those of the majority Burman ethnic people. Alongside its military attacks, the country's nominally civilian government is discussing a peace deal with more than a dozen rebel groups. Representatives of the two sides even signed the draft of a national ceasefire accord in March but that was just a draft which is yet to be approved by the leaders of both sides. And then it does not promise a lasting solution to the conflict. One of the ethnic armed groups, the Karen National Union, which controls many parts of Karen state, says that rebels will not back down on their demand for self-determination within the Union of Burma. This means the rebel groups are seeking an amendment to the constitution, which currently gives political control to the federal government. Actually, the, the problems of Burma is the constitution one to accommodate uh, the aspiration of the uh, non-Burman national, ethnic nationalities. It's gave privilege to the military and is still deny their uh, rights, uh, the rights to self-determination and uh, national equality of the ethnic nationalities. The conflict started in the 1940s when the Union of Burma was still taking birth prior to the country's independence from British rule. The British made a clear distinction between Burma proper, where Burman ethnic people lived and frontier areas which was home to various other ethnic groups. And the British administered the two areas separately. At the time of the independence, the British planned to create two separate nations. However, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill resigned and his successor from the Labour Party chose not to implement the plan. Leaders of some ethnic areas agreed to join the Union of Burma after the 1947 Panglong Agreement, which was signed under the leadership of the country's independence hero, General Aung San, the father of the Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi. The agreement promised to give frontier areas full autonomy in internal administration, an equal share of the country's wealth, and even the right to secession. However, months after signing of the agreement, General Aung San and several of his cabinet members were assassinated. The government and military regimes that followed rejected the agreement and unilaterally declared the frontier areas to be part of the Union of Burma. This is how the civil war began. Decades later, now when the current government is negotiating a truce, Rebel groups are asking it to fulfill at least some of the promises that General Aung San had made. But the government doesn't seem to be ready yet. It is, it is uh, difficult to say that the government is willing uh, to, uh, like to seek for a political uh, solution or the, uh, the, to seek for the solution of the conflicts. 
And uh, while we were on the process of negotiating the Nation vs. Fire Agreement, the fighting uh, still broken, breaking out, uh, particularly in the northern part of uh, Burma, uh, almost every day. The conflict also has cultural and religious dimensions. Burma's politics and society are dominated by the majority Burman people, most of whom are Buddhist. While some of the ethnic nationalities are also Buddhist, they practice their religion according to their own distinct cultures. What compounds the conflict further is that many current people are Christian, and Kachin and Chin people are almost entirely Christian. The Burmese government thinks that the demand for autonomy is rooted in the cultural distinctiveness of ethnic people. Therefore, its military often targets religious places when it attacks villages and also persecutes its people. Uh, particularly the, the ethnic, uh, ethnic uh, nationalities who lived in the remote areas, uh, they are most like uh, oppressed by the de de religious, particularly in the Chen state. And in the current state also in the past years, because when the Burmese troops came to the village and uh, uh, came to the uh, areas, the current areas, that they destroyed the churches, they burned down the churches and they uh, also established their army camps in the churches where the villagers and the civilians have to uh, flee and they uh, cannot practice their religion. Ethnic rebels do not appear to be optimistic about the government's efforts to strike a ceasefire deal. They say it overlooks the historical and cultural complexities that the conflict involves and that they will not stop until their demands are met. The most thing that they want is the international support and they want uh, to get legitimacy from internationally and uh, uh, domestic as well. And also they want uh, the international investment, uh, they want the international support, financial uh, and uh, like materials and uh, technical. For the ethnic people and for the Korean National Union, uh, our uh, main uh, political our uh, goal is to establish the federal union, so this is where we uh, will keep continue to uh, negotiate for that. And uh, our policy is uh, uh, the problems, the problems of Burma uh, is a uh, political problems, and so we should solve uh, the political problems through political means. <laughs>